Hello, hello. Well, hello. Hello. Hi, Mary. Hi, Hank. Hi, Mary. <laughs> we have two Marys. Yes. <laughs> All right. The more Mary's, the, the merrier. How about that? <laughs> you come up with that all by yourself. <laughs> I did. I did. <laughs> that is funny. All right. Well, shall we get started? Yes, we shall. The text get out yet. So I don't know if some folks are still joining. Yeah, it's coming if you hadn't gotten it already. Yeah, it's a coming. All, All right. right, I do see a couple of folks coming in. So let's maybe give it one more minute. Yeah. Hi, Carl. Hi, Mike. Hey, everybody. Hey there. Oh, I think it. Who is that back there? I see some arms waving. Hands. Mike, do you have wings? <laughs> Mike has angel wings, a <laughs> halo. <laughs> uh, that's too funny. Oh. <laughs> uh, some, some muscle, he's got some muscle back there. <laughs> yep. Leave Hi, it to the hands. I can't do anything with her, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're having fun. Yep, just love her. There we go. <laughs> good, good answer. Good answer. I'm going to work while we're talking. Okay. okay. Sounds good. Hey there. Yeah. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to talk about um, the agenda for today and then jump in. Uh, as always, we always start with a couple of reminders. So thank you all for joining us for Glad You Asked. Um, there are a couple of fun and exciting things happening again in Hillsboro. I want to let you know that there is an appraiser that's going to be coming on September 20th at 10 a.m. And they're going to host a breakfast for us over in Hillsboro. So if you have some questions for an appraiser, if you want to have a Q&A, you're welcome to come and join us. And I heard in the team meeting yesterday that there will also be an appraiser coming next week in Burlington. So we've got two appraisers coming to talk to agents here in the next uh, 10 days or so. Uh, so make sure that you take advantage of these opportunities to get your questions for appraisers answered. All right, so that's coming up here shortly. Um, the other reminder is that there is a team meeting here in Hillsboro next week. So if you'd like to come and attend the Hillsboro team meeting, we'd love to have you. Uh, so those are two upcoming events. Now, before we get into our three topics for the day, I do have some policy and procedure reminders that we're going to review. Today, we're going to review number 11, 16, and 20. And there's a reason for these specific ones. So as I get ready to share my screen, we'll talk about uh, the reasons for reviewing these policies. So I'm going to share the screen. And then we are going to switch over to, oh, did I hit the right button? All I see is you, Mike. <laughs> I don't know how that happened. Hold on one second. Sharing the screen here uh, to switch to the policies and procedures. Can everybody see policies and procedures? A thumbs up or something, anybody, everybody? Yep, okay, good. All right, so we're going to start with policy number 20, expired and withdrawn listing policy. We have had several agents here lately that have needed to either have a, a uh, listing withdrawn 
or needed a refresher or reminder if their listings are about to expire. I know that that's really odd for you all. You haven't had to deal with that in this market that we're coming out of. Uh, and so it's time for a reminder and a refresher on what to do in these uh, scenarios. Okay, so this is policy number 20. As you see here, when a listing needs to be withdrawn prior to the expiration of the agreement, the termination of agency agreement must be provided to the BIC immediately with the request to withdraw the listing and the MLSs that the listing needs to be withdrawn from. Remember, there are multiple MLSs that our agents are a part of, so we need to know specifically which ones you have the listing in. You should send that termination agreement and the MLSs to broker in charge 832 at gmail.com. Triangle and triad MLS rules require the listing to be withdrawn by the BIC. So that's why we need you to send that termination. Uh, the Amal Alamance MLS does allow the agent to withdraw the listing themselves as long as the BIC has the termination form. So in any scenario, we always need you to send us that termination form, okay? Now, when it comes to a uh, listing approaching expiration, if the agent will extend the listing, then the renewal agreement must be signed and submitted into command two days prior to the expiration. You can't wait till the last day. So two days prior to expiration, if you're going to extend your listing. In addition to that extension, you do have to, depending on which MLS it's in, for Triangle, you have to upload that renewal or that extension document into the MLS. It does not have to be shared with all agents. It just has to be shared to the MLS only. But you do have to upload it prior to expiration. If you fail to do so, you have to start all over again with a brand new listing agreement. So Triangle is very, very uh, tough when it comes to uh, expiration and you must get it in prior to the expiration. Now for Triad and Alamance, you are able to change the expiration date of the listing prior to expiration, and then you won't have to start it all over again, but you don't have to upload the document. In Triangle, you do. Okay, so that's just a refresher as we're running into these questions more and more here lately. So that's policy number 20. The next one that we are going to briefly review is policy number 16. Hey, Tiffany, I have a quick question. About sure. Withdrawal. So, um, so just look, I was looking at this the other day, and if you go look at the definitions in the triangle MLS, what they have, active, because you got a little question mark that tells you what the definitions are. So it's got active, contingent, expired, blah, blah, blah. But um, for the definition for withdrawn is, is basically. It has been terminated, right? No, um, man, I should have pulled this up before I started. It's okay. Withdrawn, Try. okay. Withdrawn, this is the property is under a active listing agreement, but all marketing sales efforts have ceased. So what, I, what I'm getting at, because. There, there was like a time okay, I got a rental, I got it listed, and there's like a hundred leads coming in. I can't get through to them all, so I want to just withdraw it a couple of days so I can get through the leads and stuff. Um, so look, so that's what I thought about doing. I didn't do it, but looking at the the definition for this in in Triangle MLS is that withdrawn is the properties under the active listing agreement, but all marketing and sales effort has ceased. Right. So for triangle, if you if you wanted to just pull it off temporarily for a couple of days, you need to actually do the temporarily off the market form. And so there's a separate form for that for triangle. Their rules are a lot different than triad and alamance. Okay. And so and and so the um for a triangle, it would be a cancellation if you have an actual termination. And so either way, if there is an actual termination of the agency agreement, the BIC needs a copy of that immediately. Okay, copy that. Okay, thanks for asking and thanks for bringing that up. So each of the MLSs, their rules are different. And so it's important. I'm so glad that you are referring to and reading those terms in your MLS. That's what we want all of you guys to do. Yay, Carl. Good job. All right. Any other questions before we go to the next policy review? 
All right, so we're going to jump up to number 16. Now, this one is just very brief. It is a reminder about the do not call registry. So now that things are changing and you guys are having to actually call again and, and generate some leads here, uh, just a refresher about the do not call registry. So KW Central wants to remind you to follow the do not call registry laws. You can visit the website that we have there, telemarketing.donotcall.gov to get a free subscription for certain areas and access. Or you can have larger area access for an annual subscription rate. So there is a limit. I think you get five area codes or something like that for free. And then if you want to go beyond that, you can pay for additional coverage for areas that you're going to be making phone calls in. Uh, visit the FAQs on their website for great information. For more details on the market center restrictions regarding cold calling, please see the telephone solicitation policy later in the PMP. All right. So again, as agents are having to rev up and you're starting to make some call, uh, cold calls or uh, other lead generation, just a refresher and a reminder uh, to keep in mind the do not call registry. OK, so check those numbers that you're calling uh, so that you won't have any penalties for calling someone who does not wish to be called. All right. Any questions about that one? That one's pretty straightforward, just a little reminder for you guys. And then last but not least, number 11. So this one is a little bit long, but it's worth the discussion. We're going to talk about this for conflict resolution. And it is also related to topic number one of our GYA today, which is internal conflicts. Now, we don't mean within yourself, although that is important to address, and we have uh, a mental health person coming to talk with us soon uh, in a future, glad you asked. But here, when we say internal conflict, we mean if you happen to have a conflict with another agent in the market center. And so we've had a few issues, and we wanted to just re remind you all that we have a conflict resolution policy that we would like for you to follow when you happen to have internal conflicts within the market center. All right. And so that policy, as you see here, conflict resolution, it is when conflict arises, we need you to know who to contact and when. And so when it arises in a transaction between the agent and the client, then you should contact the broker in charge for assistance. So if you ever have an agent, com uh, agent client conflict, that's when you would get us involved. Now, if a conflict arises between agents within the firm, we ask you to follow these few procedures below. So we first want to remind you of our belief system, the WI4C2TES. And so again, that is win-win or no deal. Integrity, do the right thing. Customers always come first. Don't forget that one when you're having a little bit of a conflict with another agent within the market center. Commitment in all things. Communication, seek first to understand. That one is very key. And if you take a moment to really dig a little deeper, you could find that a lot of times it could just be miscommunication or misunderstanding. All right. Creativity, ideas before results. Teamwork, together everyone achieves more. Trust starts with honesty. We're all human. We sometimes make mistakes. Let's be honest. Let's work together and resolve our issues. Equity, opportunities for all. Success results through people. So we just wanted to touch on that and go to uh, what we are asking of you when you have these internal conflicts. And so the goal is to remain in culture with our fellow associates and others seek staff leadership and guidance when conflict arises. But when you're resolving these conflicts, consider these steps. And we've got six steps for you here for internal conflict resolution. Number one, define the problem. Ask yourself, what is the real underlying issue? Identify it because you can't solve a problem if you don't know what the true problem really is. So take the time to identify your problem. Number two, come together and communicate. Allow the other party to be heard. That means that you must listen, really, truly listen, not prepare your response before they finish talking. 
but be allow the other party to be heard and understood without interruption. Okay. Number three, establish relationships, build open and honest communication through respect, respect one another. We are all professionals here and we all deserve courtesy and respect. So offer that and receive it in return. Number four, de develop an action plan. So after you have discussed the issues and after they've been defined and your grievances have been communicated, a reasonable solution should be reached and the next steps clearly identified. And as you know, from a broker in charge perspective, we always recommend that you do this in writing. Put it down, email one another about what you have come to agreement with, what you're agreeing to, and have that action plan that you can work towards together, all right? Number five, get commitment. Once mutual and agreed upon solution has been reached, follow through needs to take place. And again, that helps if you have something in writing that you can send out and make sure that there is agreement and commitment. And then finally, number six, provide feedback. Establish a follow-up meeting where both parties will get back together and measure the results of whatever their conflict resolution is. So in other words, you all, we are all adults here and we expect for you to act like it. And so adults should be able to have good conversations, talk through our issues and come to a resolution without having to go to the principal's office, okay? So we are looking for those types of activities from you all as adults and as professionals. So some guidelines there for you. And then if you at some point are still unable to resolve your issue, then you could at that point reach out to leadership for assistance. All right, Teresa, did you have anything to add to that? That was great. Um, I saw Sarah's uh, comment in the chat. She says she loved that, Tiffany, offer respect and receive it in return. And ah. that's what we have to do, respect one another. Um, it's all about respect and honesty, so love it. Um, just one thing to add, not so much add, but just, uh, to build on, I guess I'll say, um, when you're having, uh, some internal conflict with an agent within the office, as Tiffany mentioned in the P and P try to figure it out between the agents first, um, case in point, maybe there's a, one agent was working with a client and then they began working with another agent within the, the market center. You know, before things blow up, you know, approach the agent, ask them if they knew something to that effect and see if you can come up with some type of resolution amongst yourselves before um, leadership is involved. Um, because a lot of times the, the things that, the resolution, really didn't need the leadership in the beginning. You know, if the two agents had have just come to an agreement, are you gonna pay a referral fee? Are you not gonna pay? You know, whatever that is, but respectfully talk it out. Now I will say, if it cannot be resolved and you just cannot have a meeting of the minds, then of course get leadership involved and we will hear and resolve. We won't resolve it for you, because we're independent contractors and adults. However, we will help facilitate the resolution, definitely, because we want it to be a win-win for everybody. All right, well, thank you for that, Teresa. Any questions about the three policies that we reviewed today? Or any comments, concerns, grievances? Hopefully no grievances. <laughs> No. Nope. All right. Well, that sounds good. Okay. So topic number two for today, we are talking about here lately, we've been talking about E&O and giving you guys some inside uh, information about how it works. We have had so many complaints that have had to be submitted to E&O. And so we want to give you some heads up of what to do in certain scenarios. And so today's scenario is what do you do if you are asked to sign an affidavit or to provide documentations, if there is a complaint or a grievance between, say, 
past clients and the other party, but it does not actually specifically involve you. Okay. So if there's a complaint, but it's not against you, but they're asking you for information, what do you do? Okay. Now, now it's important that you understand that even if you're not involved, if you're not being sued, if you're not the person that's being complained against, if they ask you for any participation, you still need to notify the broker in charge. And the reason for that is that even though that complaint is not specifically against you, we may still have to notify E&O and we have to get that legal advice from them before you can even release any documentation. Okay, so it's really important. These documents are not uh, public knowledge and public documents and many times they may need to be subpoenaed uh, for them to be able to be released. So it might seem harmless if a past client is asking for uh, documents because they want to go and sue someone else. You know, it's really important for you if any of those types of, of uh, requests come up to notify the broker in charge first. Do not provide any documentation until you've been given direction on how to proceed. Okay. Again, there's tons of uh, complaints out there. There's a lot of lawsuits happening. And we want to help you to avoid getting pulled into something that did not initially involve you. Okay, so just want to talk about that. Uh, anything to add from the, the submission standpoint, Teresa? No, I think that's good. Very All good. Right. Uh, and of course, the reason that we even bring these up, you guys, these are things that's happening now uh, with some of our agents. And so again, giving you a heads up, if you're even asked for documentation, do not provide it until you've spoken with the broker in charge and we have some legal guidance on how to proceed. Any questions there? All right. Well, that was pretty short and sweet and straightforward there. Yes. It's, it's Natalie. Sorry. Quick question. Okay. okay. My clients call me all the time. Yeah. Like, Hey, can you send over, you know, a document or something? I can't find it. How am I supposed to script, um, something like if they're not telling me their plan is to sue someone and I give them documents and, you know, like I normally would, cause for a long time now, people ask for something sometimes and I just send it over. Mm -hmm. What's the script there? Okay, really good, Natalie. So if you're not aware, if there's no intention uh, expressed to you and your clients are just asking for documents that they have a right to, then that's fine. But if they call you up and say, I want to sue somebody or I need this because of that, that's when you, you pause and you say, hold on for a second. You mentioned litigation. I need to talk with my BIC first before I could release anything. And you just run, you just have that conversation. So um, if they're just calling, you know, I, I lost my copy of my listing agreement. Can you resend it? Sure. You know, they, it's their documents. They've signed it. They have a right to it. But if they mention a conflict litigation or something of that effect, that's the trigger for you to say, um, sure, hold on just a moment. Let me contact my BIC because you mentioned litigation. Does that make sense? It sure does. Thank you so much. Good. You're welcome. All right. Well, that's it for topic number two. Topic number three is this. If you attended the uh, Hillsborough team meeting, one of the, the stats that came up recently was that the listings are down for our market center. So even though volume is still up and you know the numbers are looking really good, the actual number of listings are down somewhat significantly. It might be surprising to some of you. And so the question for you all is, what are you doing to generate more listings? What are y'all doing right now in this market? You've seen the shift happening. You've seen things slow down. What are you up to now? How are you handling it? Hinton, is it number one, okay. Hey, I was just going to ask a question. Is it business as usual or, or maybe the ones on this call haven't, or, or even though we know it's a shift, maybe they are still getting the calls and that's coming to them. Maybe the listings are still coming to them. Um, but Paul, I see your hand raised now. Yes, sir. 
Yeah, I'm just trying to, um, like in my own neighborhood, just make sure everyone know that I am a realtor and I live in the neighborhood, so I know that neighborhood and um, get my name out there more, you know. Just by doing it, like this weekend, I have a um, event where I'm doing, um, I have shredded come out and they're going to shred documents of my um, neighbors. And that's a way for me to meet them and to get contact information from them. All right. Oh. That's a great idea, Paul. Thank you for sharing that. Love it. Excellent. I see a, a, a chat note from Sarah, shifting priorities and more attention to lead generation. Yep. And so again, we mentioned the do not call list as you are shifting your priorities. Keep that in mind when you are um, who are taking those lead generation activities. So, so Paul mentioned specifically one that he's working on. What else are you all doing? Judy, did you come off mute? So, um, I, I think people are still listing and I'm, I'm getting calls that I didn't expect actually. Uh, I, I did have an interesting conversation with someone yesterday who before me had talked to a couple of realtors who advised him to wait till the spring that he would net more money in the spring. So I thought that was interesting. You know, usually you get those questions like in November, December, should I put my home on the market now or should I wait until the first of the year? And, and now this is coming up here in what, September? September. So uh, we just had that conversation about uh, well, if seasonally listings are way up in the spring, why would you think that that would net you more money, that people would pay more when you're competing against more homes than now when inventory is still so low? Mm -hmm. So I think that um, I'm still waiting to know whether I got that listing, but it certainly it certainly stimulated conversation that um, I think maybe he suspected and the agent who referred him to me suspected, which is why she said, Judy, I think you probably should talk to him because he heard from a couple of other agents that now is not the time. So maybe preparing that people are hearing wrong information now and, and just when you have your conversations, make sure you're making the point that all expectations would be that we would continue to have that mindset among the general public that you want to wait until after the first of the year to put your home on the market. And, and then if that is the case, then that's when there'll be more competition, not less. All right. Thank you for sharing that. And those are excellent points to be prepared because we don't know what other agents are out there telling potential clients. And so someone that's pushing somebody off to the spring, that's a great opportunity for you to uh, discuss all the reasons why now is a better time. So thank you, Judy, for sharing that. Mike. Good afternoon, Mel. Um, so what we've done here recently is we are, uh, we, well, we've been doing it, but we're, we're doubling down. We're, we've actually doubled our time frame like our expired listings um, we're going back six months um, and looking at, at the listings that expired six months ago that's what we started with now we're our goal is to go back a year and two and three years um, because I was really kind of surprised in the triad MLS alone there were 137 expired listings in the last six months hmm. Now that's the whole MLS. So there, there are expireds out there. Um, and then another comment I wanted to make is the conversation that you're, that you're talking about that um, Judy had mentioned. Uh, we've had that conversation on script practice for about the last three to four weeks. Um, it, it has come up uh, talking about people wanting to wait, whether it's a buyer or a seller. Um, so if you'd like to hear some good scripts to use, join us at 8.30 every morning um, on the script practice. We're, we're low in our numbers right now, so we'd love to hear what you're hearing in the field as well. So uh, and then and then handle those um, 
those objections or those uh, conditions, whatever it is that, that we need to take on, okay? Absolutely. And thanks, Mike, for, uh, for offering that resource to agents that don't forget there is a daily script practice at 8.30 every morning. Uh, and we do have a few other resources we will remind and refresh you of a little bit later after this conversation. All right, so we do have, we've got some lead gen happening. We've got more calls. We've got going after expired listings. We have community and neighborhood events. We have being prepared for handling objections for sellers who think that they might want to wait. What else are you doing to, uh, to get some listings in these times? Judy, did you have another comment? Um, did you did I see you come off mute? Well, kind of uh, segueing. So the script practice is really good, but the time for me is not so good. And I've heard that the suggestions been out there and kicked around about maybe offering a second script practice time during the day, which I would be very much in favor of because I think the script practice is great. I just, you know, with all the things going on in the morning, I can't do any 30 on a consistent basis. And I, I'd really like to. Okay. So I'm actually looking at, at putting a survey out on the Keller Williams private page to see what times would work best. Um, Cause I'm getting, I'm getting times from 10 to two to four to seven. Um, and obviously we can't accommodate five different ones every day or, you know, but we're, so I'm going to put it out there. We're just going to go with the majority. It's kind of what we've, uh, a discussion that a couple of us have had about having more participation. And I'm going to throw something out there. I, I just thought about it as um, Mike and Judy were talking. And before I do that, I see Alice asked a question, where will the survey be found, Mike? And you said it's going to be posted in the Facebook group. Okay. Yes. So, okay. So check the private page, keep um, an eye out for the notification um, when that's put out there on the private Facebook group. Um, what, one thing I was just thinking, maybe if, for instance, we could record some role playing with the scripts, just take a couple of um, main scripts that can be used like objection handlers and maybe get some script pros out there to record it. And we can put that on our Facebook channel. No, no, not Facebook, YouTube, YouTube, YouTube channel and record it and just have a couple of scripts out there for someone to go back at any time. So you may not be able to record every script practice. There's a lot of scripting practice every day, but maybe if we could record a couple of role plays and post them. Um, that's actually been discussed as well. Um, and the reason we don't record is there's people that get on the call that don't want to be recorded. So that, that's where we went to, uh, we, went, we went back to that after we recorded for some time. Um, and so we're, we're, we, Joe and I have had some discussion about what we can do to, to increase our, our participation. And so we're, we're working on a few things and hopefully we'll be able to get some things out there pretty soon to everybody. Yeah, yeah. I think maybe a Joe Baker and a Mike McCann, if they could role play with a couple of agents or even me, I'll role play. I'll be the seller, I'll be the buyer. <laughs> and I want you all to script me, so. That's like <laughs> maybe, <a> <laughs> make me list. I think yep. we've got some really great, uh, some gr great folks that don't mind being recorded, Mike. So uh, we, I think that could be something we could definitely make work. I, it looks like Natalie is even on screen. Are you uh, volunteering, Natalie? <laughs> no, no, I have a, something to add that's been very helpful for me lately. Um, I've been watching Anna Kruger. She is a genius. She's a Keller Williams Maps coach, and she shares script, her scripts online. And actually, I would be open to like doing just watching that with people and then trying it together so that it takes the burden off of, you know, like we don't need to reinvent this wheel. There are geniuses out there. Mm -hmm. What's the name again, Natalie? 
Uh, her name's Anna Kruger, K-R-U, I want to say G-G-E-R. Um, and, you know, she's just, um, she's just got this wonderful um, disposition and she just is reminding me all of the sort of bold script stuff as well, like don't go up at the end and really practicing. Um, but, you know, actually doing that together would be really nice. All right, perfect. Yeah, that's a great idea. Love it, love All it. All right. Well, you guys, thanks for sharing your thoughts and some ideas of what to be doing now as uh, the market is shifting and you're having to, to make a few calls and reach out and have some different kinds of conversations. So uh, in addition to the things that, uh, Natalie, you have one more thing? I just wanna yeah. say, it's been really hard, um, at least this is my self-limiting belief, it's been hard for me to be really clear with my listing appointments because the data from the summer really kind of just got published. And so people were getting afraid of the market and it was hard to really have a concrete conversation without numbers in front of me. So I do think that I'm, I'm gonna, um, at least for myself, benefit from the August numbers coming out because people all know something's happening, but we really didn't have any, you know, numbers to sort of, um, I don't know, just project what's actually happening in the market. And um, a lot of people thought it was way worse than it was and, you know, all those things. So I just want to share that from my perspective, that's what's been every, pretty, you know, challenging. Yeah, that's fair, a fair assessment. Thank you for sharing that with um, with the being in the midst of the change, but without having the data to back up and support what we're actually seeing. Yeah, that is a, a challenge. And um, so good thing that those numbers are coming out. Uh, a couple of other things to prepare to discuss with uh, sellers that are considering whether they should make a move now or not. So um, that is a great point to bring up. You're going to have some more resources available shortly with those numbers. All right. And speaking of resources available, in addition to uh, things like script practice, I know that you've heard uh, that now would be a good time to read the shift book. We've been talking about it several times here, and there's even a book club that has started on Wednesdays. I believe it's one o'clock uh, in, in person in Burlington. Uh, so if you want to read it along with other people and discuss it, that is an option that's available. But if not, remember the book, Shift, you might want to get a copy of it and uh, go ahead and just review some of these tactics that you can begin to prepare and implement in a shifting market. It's always a really great review, uh, whether you do it with others or just for yourself. So I wanted to remind you that that is available. Um, and don't forget, you've got things like the Glad You Asked, where you can come and bring some of your challenges before you know, you've got the, the brokers in charge, but you also have another other great agents here that have great experience that are willing to share and to assist. So don't forget to plug into uh, the resources that you do have that are available to you. So now's a good time to just get refreshed on your lead generation strategies, but keep in mind rules and regulations so you don't get yourself in any trouble. All right. Um, in, in yeah, addition any uh -huh. The uh, agent mastermind that um, the market center has started having, um, the ALC puts that on. So we see the invitations, they send out a, um, a text about it. So be on the lookout for the agent masterminds that are discussing these very things, um, the shifting market and even just masterminding events, things that we can do like Paul mentioned. I think that's very creative. Uh, thinking, having shredded come out and shred in the neighborhood. So be on the lookout for the ALC's agent mastermind. All right. And one final refresher from team meeting yesterday when it comes to uh, this, there was a chart that I found to be actually pretty helpful uh, where the, I can't remember the guy, the magazine guy, but he was talking about that 40% of your business. I know, I'm sorry, Natalie, I should know his name, Nolan, somebody, I think, but uh, about 
40% of your business is going to come from following up with repeat, you know, past clients and just following up with the warm leads that you already have. So instead of trying to recre recreate the will, and I'm not saying that cold calling doesn't work, but I'm saying use the tactic that does work. And the majority of the business comes from people that you already know, your sphere, uh, your past clients. So make sure that you're reaching out. Keep in mind that there are several holidays coming up that you're going to have opportunities to uh, send out reminders, mailers, cards, you know, take advantage of what's coming uh, in this next season here with the opportunities to reach out to your, your warm sphere. All right. So just wanted to give you that, uh, that little refresher. That was a little nugget I pulled out of that meeting yesterday. All right. So any other questions about Legion before I give you guys a little heads up about what's coming next? No questions? All right. Well, before we open it up to general questions or questions about your uh, actual transactions, I, I want to give you all a heads up. We have had several requests from agents. We've had uh, questions about forms or requests to review uh, terms and things like that. So I wanted to let you know ahead of time, our next Glad You Asked on September 22nd, we are going to be doing an in-depth forms review on several different forms. We're not doing the entire forms, but we're doing portions that we've been specifically asked about here recently, because if one agent has questions, chances are there's a lot more of you. So we are going to go over the professional services disclosure. Uh, we've talked about why it's important, but we're going to give a refresher on what that form is, how and why you use it. Uh, so that you can be prepared to have that properly done in your uh, transactions. We're also going to talk about the new dual agency section of our agency agreements. We've had a lot of questions since they have changed that format in the agency agreement. The concept of dual agency has not changed, but for some reason that formatting change has generated some more questions. So we are going to review that in the uh, buyer agency listing agreement, that new layout for dual agency, and of course, that the policy and procedure that goes with it, you know, we might as well pull it all in together. Uh, we are going to review together the WWREA, the new disclosure. There have been some misunderstandings about how to utilize that. So we're going to review that in the next slide you asked. We are also going to review some of the terms within the agency agreement and specifically regarding compensation and uh, how you handle uh, potential objections when it comes to how compensation is worded in the agency agreement. So those are specific things that we're going to pull up the actual forms and review in detail with you all in the next glad you asked. So we wanted to let you know that that's coming. And while we have you here, are there any other specific forms or things that you would like to add to this list that we're going to cover in detail on the next Glad You Asked. Is there some form, something you keep getting stuck on, something else that you would love to see while we're doing this forms review? If you can't think of it now, always send us an email or a text or something. And we'll be happy to add that. Judy. So I find myself going through the entire listing agreement with some people, you know, I'll hand it to them. For some people, of course, they just say, where do I find? For other mm -hmm. people, they really want a paragraph by paragraph explanation. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I'd reached out to, to you with a couple of the, the finer points that most people don't ask about. And then I found myself kind of like, I'm not really sure. Let me check and I'll get back to you. And then, of course, you know, your credibility looks less if you don't know every single thing about the form. So what I would love to see is you or Teresa, if you were sitting there in a listing agreement or a buyer consult, I would like to hear how you would be sitting there with your client and going through paragraph by paragraph explaining to you know, obviously you don't want the dictionary definition and, and, and have to have a manual nearby, but rather the talking point that you would be using to, to give your client a warm feeling about what this means without scaring them off too, 
too much. Okay. All right. And Judy, that sounds like, you know, we actually have something very similar. It's in our boot camp for new agents, but it sounds like uh, it might be good to have that refresher for, for all our older agents too then. And so uh, we are working on updating that boot camp with the new forms. So what we can do is make sure that we have that available uh, for all agents and not just the new agents, because we actually do do that. We go through the entire uh, documents as if we were talking through or talking with a client. Uh, for for part of the new agent boot camp, but thank you for mentioning that that could be of assistance to older agents as well. Well, and I, you know, I really think that that's um, an important point is that there's always this assumption that just because you've been around for a long time that you know this stuff as well as anybody. But really, you know, we ne weren't necessarily part of the initial boot camps or whatever. And then, you know, I find myself maybe being more insecure than a newer agent who just came out of class because I haven't had the refreshers. And honestly, I don't even know where to look for them. So, um, you know, for some people, maybe it's repetitious, but I really think there's value in pulling some of that stuff off the shelf for us agents who have been around. Okay. Well, thank you. That's definitely a great idea. And we can work on, as we're updating that boot camp. Uh, make sure that we have a way to release it to all the agents, not just the new ones. Yeah. Thank you, Judy. Yeah, that was good. Thank, thank you, Judy. That will give us something. And thank you, uh, Tiffany, for bringing up the boot camp. Yes, we can re readjust um, something else that's inclusive for all agents, not just the new ones. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. All right. Uh, Any other forms, anyone? While they're thinking, just real quick, Alice wants to know where the information or the script for Anna Kruger can be found, Natalie. Can you share with us on YouTube? YouTube. You're still muted, Natalie. Hey, Natalie, can you unmute? I think you're looking at your phone, but you're muted. Or type it in the chat. Sorry, yeah, let me look and I'll try to send it along. Okay. Okay. All right, thank you, dear. All right, so we're excited about preparing that forms review for you all. And um, oh, Mary says that she typed it in and it came up on Facebook and YouTube. She typed in the name Anna Kruger. Uh, K-R-U-E-G-E-R. -E -E and so that should help um, help you to find uh, the videos, Facebook and YouTube. All right. And so with that being said, we, we let you know a little bit about what's coming up next. Glad you asked. We are still working on, uh, now that we have appraisers coming in both locations in person, we're going to take some notes from those appraisers and maybe rehash some of those things that we learn in a future Glad You Asked, but we won't necessarily have one come just for GYA because we've got two coming here in the next uh, month or couple of weeks here. Uh, and so instead of that, we are going to be focused on getting our Orange County permit person. We've had, we have some calls out and hopefully we'll have a, a date hammered down for you guys shortly uh, to talk about permits and how they differ in Orange versus the Alamance. That we had. And then uh, again, uh, we have a mental health expert that will be coming to talk with us in the future as well that we're hammering out a date for. So those are a couple of, of guest speakers that we're going to have coming soon. All right. Um, in the chat, if you check the chat, there is a link to a YouTube channel for Anna. Uh, and it looks like there's some several other um ways to look her up so make sure you check the chat and maybe click on that link if you want to see uh, or view anna kruger for yourself thank you all for sharing thank you natalie yeah and i just want to add that only 10 percent of appraisals are coming in short as of last month according to the statistics i'm getting from my mortgage people and we had been at closer to almost 30 percent so if there's any reason for a seller to be excited 
it's that our, our appraisals are in alignment with what's happening. Okay, that's really good. Thank you for sharing that. That's exciting. Um, and so uh, for your clients, especially buyer clients, uh, to not have to worry about paying so much over perhaps and the seller clients not having to worry about possibly negotiating that. So good news that appraisers are coming back in, in line, I guess you could say. Although I think they are still booked out multiple weeks. Uh, last I heard, they're still it still takes them a while to get out there. So make sure that you get those ordered ASAP uh, when you go under contract. All right, so any questions? What's happening? Uh, Teresa, did you have something? Yep. There's a question in the chat. Give the date again for the appraiser coming to Hillsboro. Oh, okay. The appraiser will be in Hillsboro September 20th at 10 a.m. So it's a breakfast event. Breakfast will be provided on September 20th, 10 a.m. And I think the Burlington appraiser date, I believe it was the 16th, but check the calendar. Don't hold me to it. Um, I didn't, I was writing, taking notes really fast, but I didn't quite get down the details for that one. But I do know it's next week sometime. All right. All right. So what, what's going on with you guys? Any questions as we open the floor? What's happening in your transactions? Anything we can help with? So everyone's transaction is going perfectly smooth. All I have a question for the floor. Okay. Does anybody know, and this is a technical question, I would love to save my text messages or to print them out from a transaction, but I cannot figure out how to do it. Ah, good question. Too bad Daniel's not here. <laughs> I know. What? I can oh, what phone do you have? iPhone. iPhone. Okay. Awesome. Nobody knows. There's nobody, no millennials on the call that can help me. You can screen each item. You just have to screen the question them. again. Yeah, but that takes work. Yeah. What? Yeah, I could. That's at least I have something then, though. Maybe that's better than nothing. Yeah. I know. I have Verizon and I've never I screenshot that. all the time. Person, there must be some way to print that out. Maybe, maybe there, that might be a, an avenue that would work. All right. So Alice mentioned that she has Verizon, and there may be a way to to access or print out your text history. Um, if you look in your chat, uh, Lauren and Carl both mentioned you can screen screenshot them, email them to yourself. Uh, Mary says to print out iPhone text messages, follow these steps. And she has some detailed steps in the chat. So uh, if you have an iPhone, please look at those uh, steps to, and she found it on Google. So you can also Google it, how to print out your, um, your text on an iPhone. So thank you, Mary, for sharing those details and for helping out. Um, I know, Natalie, that there are some apps that are designed to do to go from text to email, but I don't know the specific apps and what have you. So I could that is a question I will still run past Daniel um, because I'm sure other agents probably have the same question or issue. So thank you for asking. Mm -hmm. So I'll bring something up that um, that transpired in, in the course of one of our transactions. Uh, earlier this week that kind of uh, uh, reminded me of how I learned due diligence. So, um, so I was in the middle of a listing agent. Um, I got a due diligence request from a buyer probably a week prior to their end of due diligence period. Um, they, they sent me an inspection report and said, these were the things that we found wrong. What, if anything, will the seller um, do for us? Went over it with the seller. Seller said, you know, I explained clearly, you don't have to do anything. He said, okay, I'll, I'll offer him a $500 credit. That was on Friday. 
Due diligence ended this past Tuesday. I heard nothing Friday, nothing Saturday, nothing Sunday. Monday, at one hour prior to the end of due diligence, I heard back from their, their person, their transaction manager, saying, we think that there are structural issues. $500 probably wouldn't even cover the inspection. We'd like a $2,000 credit. And I thought, are you kidding me? This is one hour before the end of due diligence. Nothing's been resolved. You waited all this time. And I actually questioned myself, like, and I took it to the seller. I said, I just want you to know this is happening, but really you don't have to do anything. And I'd like for you both to just confirm that at 5 p.m. at the end on the last day of due diligence period, everything needs to be agreed to and documented, right? Okay. So good question. Uh, to, Teresa, do you want to take this one or you want me to jump in? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. We're going to say the same thing anyway. Yeah, we always <laughs> do. You go ahead this time. <laughs> um, so I just had actually the offer to purchase up. Um, let me see if I still do because I was, we have a few minutes, maybe. Do I still have it up? I don't. I actually had it up. Um, it's highly recommended on the offer to purchase that your the buyer perform all of their inspections and have anything that they want negotiated prior to the due diligence period ending. Now, the thing is, I have a question outside of that. Is are the parties still allowed to negotiate even after the due diligence period? I'm seeing Mike's. Mike head. is like, yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, so they they could, they could, they, but are they obligated? Well, is the seller that, ever obligated to negotiate at all? Never. No. So you're right about that, Judy. That's yeah. right. So mm -hmm. they do not have to even. It's, it's in the buyer's best interest to negotiate before the due diligence period if there's due diligence monies and earnest monies and all that stuff involved. However, seller isn't even obligated during their due diligence period to say yes to anything. Um, they shouldn't breach, of course. Sellers should not breach um, during any part of the contract, but seller is never obligated to, and that's the beauty of North Carolina being a due diligence state. I'll be honest, when due diligence first came about, I was one of those who said, oh my gosh, why are we trying to be like other states or why are we doing this? I hate due diligence. Due diligence money was zero. Nobody was given anything in due diligence, but I've learned to love it because it makes it so much easier. That's the buyer's opportunity to investigate and decide whether they're going to continue or not with the transaction. They don't have to. And I believe if we just educate our clients, then we would be so much better off. But Judy, you're right. Seller does not have to agree to do anything. We're caveat emptor. So I learned this lesson the hard way. I was a buyer's agent when due diligence first came to North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And everybody was figuring it out. Yep. And we were dealing with um, bad water and a water filtration system that we wanted the seller to pay for. And I'll never forget because I was dealing with a newer agent and it was like 10 after five on the last day of due diligence when I finally had the information about the water filtration and how much credit and all of that. And I called up at like 10 after five and the new agent put her BIC on the phone. And she said, Judy, I am the BIC. And due diligence is over. End of story. We're not giving you anything. And so I went out and spent a couple of thousand dollars out of my own pocket because I felt like I had let down my buyer and, and bought her the water filtration equipment. So, um, so I was kind of shocked when last week, you know, I figured everybody must know this now. And here I get, you know, from like the biggest team in Raleigh 
you know, their closing coordinator is asking me at four o'clock to, you know, to negotiate <laughs> at, with a five o'clock deadline. Yeah. So remember, the seller's going to keep if the seller says no the buyer doesn't like it the seller will keep the due diligence money if it goes past 5 p.m that buyer will lose their earnest money so it's really the buyer that has the onus of getting it done in time uh, because they have something more to lose uh, alice says that uh, paul says it's a negotiation tactic alice says i've had listing agents not respond until 4 45 with requests that were made much earlier so, you know, that again is possibly a negotiations tactic, but remember when it comes to who has something to lose, it's the buyer if they don't get it all resolved and in writing prior to the end of due diligence period, because the seller's never, never obligated, period. But if the seller agrees, then they are obligated to what they agree to in writing. And as Mike mentioned so uh, adamantly earlier, uh, a seller can, if they choose to, still agree even after the due diligence period, if it's something that they're going to need to uh, address, perhaps in, in a future transaction, they might still decide to go ahead and address an issue. So they can, but they don't, they're never required to. All right. Well, thank you so much, everybody. It is 2.01. We've actually gone over a minute, so sorry to do that. Uh, thank you for joining us. We're glad you asked, and we look forward to seeing you guys in a couple of weeks for that forums review. Make sure you're here. See you then. Bye, everybody. Thanks for coming. We are so glad you asked. All right, everybody. Have a good one.